the government still haven't conducted a proper criminal investigation into why this has actually happened, why these manufacturers and quarries have gotten away to date with what, with, with what they've produced and sold onto the open market, sold it onto the EU open market, the British open market, which has resulted in an absolute greatest disaster in the housing industry history of the state. You're very welcome to Encompass Media. It's Tuesday, the 28th of March, 2023. And I'm going to have a discussion now on the issue of the defect of concrete in Donegal, and indeed it's affecting homes and buildings nationwide. I'm joined by Councillor Frank McBurty from Donegal and from Seamus May, who is the chair of the International Small Business Alliance from Sligo. Good evening, gentlemen. Evening, Anna. Uh, Thank you for inviting us on. Thank you once again for inviting me on to your show. Frank, if I could begin with you, it's in the news today that you were expelled from the uh, Donegal County Council meeting yesterday. So can you just give me um, uh, the background to this and what actually happened yesterday? First of all, I've been suspended for three months without pay and I've been fined 10% of my salary and expenses for the next 12 months. Now, this is the second time that the council has done this, but they have moved the notch up uh, they have sus- actually suspended me the last time for one month, and they did it for because of, of me asking legitimate, qualified questions that I was elected to do and elected to ask on behalf of the people that elected me. Now, my lawyers at the minute are looking at all the avenues open to me, and one avenue that is not open to me, there's no appeals mechanism as a member of local government for me to appeal the decision that was taken against me yesterday by the elected members of Donegal County Council through the chair, the Cahirdux uh, office, uh, who asked the members for the for proposals where three resolutions of the council was passed to, first of all, expel me from the meeting, then to, to uh, fine me 10% of my salary for, 10, for, for 12 months, and then the final resolution was to suspend me for three months with no pay. Now, in my opinion, and I've talked to my lawyers in the last two days over over this, it's unconstitutional what has been done to me. If I was in a job working for the HSE or if I was in the Garda Shikana and I was suspended, I would be entitled to due process and I would be entitled to my salary until that due process was completed. So there's a lot more to happen now in the next number of days probably in the courts, um, where I'll be uh, instructing my lawyers to take the appropriate action, to seek seek relief in the High Court, because of what I I describe as the unlawful and illegal uh, uh, attempts to silence me for doing my job as an elected member of local government. Frank, of course, the background to all of this is the mica damaged houses in Donegal, which you have been querying? Well, first of all, I, I, I don't want to correct you, but Mike is not the issue in Donegal. The issue is reactive iron sulfide minerals are actually causing the problem, and the predominant one is purity. Now, there's other reactive iron sulfide minerals that have also shown up that are devastating to, to the properties in Donegal. And people need to stop calling this the Mica scandal, because what people should be calling it is the defect of concrete scandal because it's not just in Donegal that this scandal is actually happening. It's happening now all over the country and it's even happening in Derry and Tyrone and County Fermanagh and probably in other parts of the six counties uh, or as some people know it is Northern Ireland. And it's an island of Ireland problem now and the, the authorities in Northern Ireland will have to now investigate and look at what they need to do to find out why products from Donegal were sold into counties Derry, County Tyrone, and County Fermanagh that we know about that are showing visual visual effects on these properties structurally that, that they look defective, similar to the effects 
of the properties in Donegal. Frank, what evidence have you to show that this is not a MICA problem? Well, first of all, the evidence that we have is based on proper scientific testing conducted through our engineers with the help of Petrolab and Cornwall in the UK. My father, my cousin Breeze McConnell and her husband Dermot Fyre from County Galway, and uh, my cousin Kevin Connolly and his wife Louise, they're the first homes in Donegal to have what's called a sulfate attack analysis conducted on their blocks. Now, when you test a block, under IS465, which in my opinion is a fraudulent standard created for, for this whole scandal uh, to allow the government out, out of a hole that they've created for themselves. And a test suite A is conducted first. A test suite B then brings back the percentage of mica or free muscovite mica. But it also shows if you use Petrolab, a visual estimate of reactive iron sulfate minerals. Now, IS465 actually has a test suite C mechanism, but it's only for pyrite. Uh, and that's for homes in Mayo, County Mayo, which is now extended to Clare and Limerick under the testing process under IS465. Now, we instructed our engineers to, for the extra 500 pounds sterling to do the sulfate attack analysis so we, we can get the exact quantified percentage of the visual estimates of the reactive iron sulfate minerals that were showing up, such as pyrotite, rare pyrite, minor pyrite, chalcopyrite, marcosite, secondary formation of thomasite and etrogenite, and the secondary formation of gypsum. Now, the results have come back showing devastating levels of reactive iron sulfate minerals, predominantly pyrotite being the most dominant one, uh, uh, the permitted level under the EU standards is EM12620 for aggregates and concrete, which is, uh, which is 0.1%. And EM7713 is, is the, the standard for concrete itself and concrete, concrete products. Uh, and 0.1% permitted level is, is the level allowed in those standards. Now, those are the standards that should have been used for testing in Donegal, Mayo, and every other county. Now, IS465 was deliberately, in my opinion, created in order not to tell the full facts of what the problems are in Donegal. Now, I'll give an example. In my own town of Rafo, the council has been building 11 new social houses that went into administration. The contractor actually has gone into administration. But all the testing done on that brand new development was done under EN7713, which is the European standard, a British recognized standard, and an Irish recognized standard, and the National Standards Authority of Ireland's standard recommendation for that is SR325. Now, you have to ask yourself the question, why is the local authority testing a new property under the EU standard and not, not using the standard that they helped design and create which is IS465, the Irish Defective Concrete Block Standard for, for defective concrete blocks in Donegal that are affected by MICA only and Pyrite and County Mayo only. Now, these are huge questions that need to be answered. In my opinion, a public inquiry is the only way that we'll get the full truth about what the government has done in this cover-up to date. Frank, what you have been saying there is very, very technical for the uninitiated like myself. But what I'm picking up from you is the fact that the majority of houses across Ireland that are crumbling, as it were, from defective concrete um, will not come under the government's compensation scheme because of the standard that they are using to assess the damage to the houses. Is that what you're saying, quite simply. Yeah, but to make it simple, make is not the problem. Make is not a reactive mineral. So the cracking, the swelling, and the eventual crumbling over time of the concrete block is not caused by free muscovite mica. And that's a scientific fact. What is actually causing it, and we have the scientific evidence now to prove it, 
that is reactive iron sulfate minerals that are causing the cracking, the swelling, and the eventual crumbling. The word progressive is the word that we need to be using because this, this problem is going to be, become more progressive every day it keeps going on. And every day that you retain the blocks and the concrete foundations that are in your home, it becomes a progressive problem on a daily basis. If I could turn to you now, Seamus, Seamus, uh, you have a background in the concrete industry. Tell me about it. Yes, Anna. Well, <clears throat> my family have been in the uh, cement, quarry, concrete, tarmac, um, ready mix business since the 1950s. So we're, we're, we're second generation in the industry. Um, it's well known to a lot of people anyway that um, I have issues with the industry. And my, my issues are that the industry has become, uh, well, right back since the 1960s, very, very corrupt. And I, I, I can explain that um, on, on this show, but I can explain it separately in, on, on, in another interview. But the bottom line is that so powerful has the industry become that they literally were able to write their own standards. Um, a, a, one of the chief, one of the key executives in the industry um, told us that uh, they had an open door to the Taoiseach's office, whereas all the rest of us don't. We don't, we, we would never get in front of a Taoiseach to discuss the issues. So, so like I'm coming here from, from a different place than, than, than Frank. I'm coming from a different place than the likes of and the Craig, but we all, we, 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 and it's not as if we're all together that we're colluding to put across a particular narrative. I don't think that's the case at all. I think that we are very genuine people without any vested interests or, or axe to grind. And it just so happens that, you know, I have been following Frank for quite a long time and, and, and Craig for a long time. And indeed, all of the different people are groups that have Facebook pages. And like I see this as a complete and entire political cover up. Um, the, the, the politicians have grabbed hold of the narrative and because a lot of the groups are run uh, and are represented by people that don't have the experience, don't have the knowledge. And I've been saying all the time, people that are very, very naive. And th this is why the government are playing ducks and drakes with the victims. Like the fact of the matter is all of these houses, not only in Donegal, but probably in 12, 13 counties now and, and, and maybe expanding, these people and the contractors who built their houses were all, all bought these products in good faith. And the, the people that supplied the products, i.e. the quarrying sector, the quarry and concrete sector, have not been called to account. In actual fact, they are being protected. And one of the ways of protecting them was this IS-465, which Frank has talked about at length there. I mean, there, there, there's, there's no hope of sorting out this, this problem um, as it stands. And I'll tell you why. Because... People with second homes, unless they're registered, people with holiday homes, uh, commercial buildings, farm buildings, an awful lot of, they're completely and totally excluded from this proposed scheme. And the, the proposal, and it, it, like, I cannot understand why um, the government is taking over responsibility for these defective houses and defective buildings. Uh, when, 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 in actual fact, it was the construction materials industry that caused the problem. So uh, all of these barriers that are being uh, and, and that are being placed in by the government, uh, why, why are the government not looking after the public interest, which in this case is the people who are suffering from defective building materials in their in their properties? Why I I just cannot understand that. And and following from that. The people that are being asked to pay the bill are taxpayers. And of course, taxpayers are saying, why, why should we pay the bill for your big fancy house in Donegal? Um, well, in actual fact, they, they shouldn't have to. The industry should have to. 
And there's insurance in place within the industry that seems to be conveniently forgotten about. And of course, the industry can well afford uh, to pay the damages. And I have sent a very, very detailed letter to the Irish Concrete Federation back in July of last year, uh, which they have failed to respond to. And I would argue that they have accepted the content of my letter. So there's a lot more Anna, to, to this than meets the eye. And the people that are suffering are the victims. The secondary sufferers are the taxpayers. And the people that are getting away scot-free are the people that caused the problem in the first place. And of course, I have... Uh, uh, you know, my family have manufactured tens of millions of blocks and put out many, many, many meters of concrete. We we know this industry inside out. So I find that all the efforts I made to help people along the way have been utterly rejected. And I, I, I believe that is because uh, the government uh, know who the threats are and they use their influence on naive people to exclude people that really can contribute to sorting out this issue. Seamus, you mentioned there at the outset that the representatives of the concrete industry have an open door to the Taoiseach. And, uh, you know, in recent times, it, it has been a bit like musical chairs. Um, are you speaking about the current Taoiseach or are you speaking about a, a former Taoiseach? No, that's a very good point, Anna. Um, I'm actually speaking about all the Tishi over the years. And I can actually mention uh, Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, Labour, the Progressive Democrats and the Green Party. These, the, All of these parties have been involved in protect, protecting, aiding and abetting the, the, the misconduct that has been taking place in the construction materials industry for many decades, and I can go back to the 1960s with, 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 uh, to explain what has been going on. So no, it's it's the Taoiseach's office as and whoever happens to be Taoiseach. Um, I know, um, like I didn't mention Sinn Féin there because Sinn Féin have never been in power. So I can't say uh, what Sinn Féin would do or will do if they get into power, but I'm talking about the parties that have been in power. They, they all have succumbed to basically to corruption. Sometimes it's real raw naked corruption. Sometimes it's just legal corruption. But that is the problem. Our government does not act in the public interest. In this case, the victims, our government acts in the corporate interest all the time. Seamus, there's nothing new there in what you're saying, because it seems to be the default position of uh, the government to devise schemes which actually fall short of providing proper compensation for victims and uh, go on to protect uh, corporate bodies or religious organisations or whatever. And we saw it most recently in the redress scheme um, for, um, for children uh, who spent less than six months in the mother and baby homes. They are excluded from uh, the redress scheme that announced by Minister Roderick O'Gorman before Christmas. I, we've seen it in so many times replicated in Ireland. Uh, we see it in the cervical cancer scandal. And now um, it's going to be in the uh, COVID vaccine uh, scandal in, 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 in the years ahead, because the government has indemnified the manufacturers of the uh, COVID vaccines from any damages that might occur as a result of uh, receiving one of these vaccines. So what you've been saying there, Seamus, is, is just par for the course. If I could go back to you. Oh, sorry, I, Anna, um, I, if I can come in just once more, I want to make one more further point. You cannot go to a pub or a restaurant or a coffee morning or a chit chat but you hear about the corruption in Ireland. And I have seen the corruption for the last 40 years. I've seen it. It's systemic and it's endemic. And suddenly along comes a person like Frank McBearty, who is anti-corruption and who has proved that over the years. And what does Donegal County Council do to him? It seems to me that they reject him. They try to exclude him completely. What do the victims of, of this crisis do? 
they reject Frank and they run with other uh, vested interests or other other groups that simply don't know what they're talking about. So to me, like, will we ever make progress in Ireland when someone like Frank McBearty has the bravery to go forward and become a politician? He became a politician to tackle corruption. And this is the treatment he's getting. Like this to me is outrageous. Frank, if I could uh, go back to you, this is not your first time to tackle state corruption. You have a track record, as it were. You've been through the Morris Tribunal. And we won't really go into that in any great detail now. But do you feel that you're facing into a corruption of the same magnitude or is this a lesser scandal? This is actually the biggest scandal in the history of the state, in my opinion, because there's so many people involved in it. Like we estimate there's over 50,000 properties in Donegal that are eventually going to be affected by what's called deleterious materials and reactive iron sulfate minerals. Effective concrete for short. And that's the reality. Now, in Justice Frederick Morris' final report, the words systemic corruption is what he used. And the culture of systemic corruption in the Irish free state is what the problem is. But the reality is that the Irish authorities have never actually dealt with the problems with that systemic corruption in Irish society. Now, you have the Mahan Flood Tribunal, the Moriarty Tribunal, the Morris Tribunal, and many other tribunals that have made recommendations and made some fantastic findings. And the recommendations were also very good recommendations. Most of those tribunals have never had their recommendations implemented by the Irish authorities, which is our Irish government, which is our government. And that is the reality. But I want to go back and touch on a few things that one of the most important aspects of this scandal is scientific testing. Without the proper scientific testing being conducted, and I'll give the examples now, my father has the three test suites that is needed to identify exactly what's wrong with his blocks. Test suite A, test suite B, and a test suite C. Test suite C, as I explained earlier, is the sulf, sulf, uh, sulfate attack analysis. And that is actually the problem with the, with the concrete blocks. But we've gone one step further than anybody else because we need this evidence to prove our case in the high court when we issue proceedings now in the coming months and my father's, uh, uh, my parent and my parents and my mum and dad's home seeking compensation from the Irish state for allowing this to happen. Now, they have had to take eight core samples from the foundations. Now, there is no testing mechanism for foundations. So we've gone out and we've, we're have we the first to do what we've done. We took the eight core samples, sent them to Petrol Lab through our engineer, had the corn contractor take the eight core samples, test uh, on a petrography examination, which is basically in lay terms, is a categorization examination of, of the eight core samples. A petrographic examination then was done as a second test, uh, identifying three of the core samples having levels of reactive iron sulfate minerals that are above the 0.1% permitted in a concrete foundation mix, which I've quoted earlier, which is EN 7713, which is the European, British, and Irish standard. Now, we had to have a third test. We had to have all eight core samples, a compression strength test done on all eight core samples. So the eight core samples were crushed to see what the strength was in those eight, eight core samples. And as a result of that, Petrol Lab advised the chartered engineer that we must do a, an exercise and do five boreholes and the, and the ground to prove that there was no contamination causing the external and internal sulfate attacks showing up in the test results. So we had to get a company in Northern Ireland called Causeway Geotech to come in and take four bore borehole samples. And Seamus will know what I'm talking about here because he's, he's been involved in the concrete industry. Take those samples, send them off for testing, and the test results came back. The ground had no contamination. So... The Petrolab geologists, 
John Fletcher and Bradley uh, Shinnett Shit, uh, and our chartered engineer, Kieran Coyle from Albert Fry's and Associates, they put their heads together and we now have the final report proving that our foundations are as defective as my father's concrete blocks. And that, that is what everybody, everybody needs, the scientific evidence to prove their case. Now, what the Irish government should have been doing, they should have been doing all this testing for all property owners, because as Seamus said earlier, the people, the property owners, the business owners, they didn't cause this. This was caused by an industry that is that is self-regulated, which should now change immediately with legislation being passed in the doll and make it make it a regulated industry with proper oversight, proper policing of the industry, because bulk and control and market surveillance is there at the minute to police an unregulated industry is not working. And I'll give an example of that. Donegal County Council have no record since 2001, since the industry became self-regulated, have no record whatsoever of building control or market surveillance whatsoever on Donegal manufacturers or quarries. And that's, the, the, that's where the root of this problem lies. There is no proper oversight. It's similar to what happened in, in Gerda Shikana. They had no proper oversight, no proper policing of, of who polices the police, as people used to say in the commentary and the many interviews that I was interviewed on about Gerda corruption. We have nobody policing the concrete industry and the quarry industry in Ireland. And that is the root of the problem. And until the Irish government puts together a proper oversight body, a proper, a proper ombudsman in place, and a proper, a proper mechanism to ensure that they don't cheat the system and that they abide to the European standards set down. Because the Irish government, whether they like it or not, they've allowed companies in this country to cheat the system. They've broken the EU laws, they've broken British laws, and they've broken Irish laws that they must adhere to during the manufacturing process. And those laws are being broken. But the Irish government are hiding behind the fact, oh, we haven't broken any of these laws. We have a mechanism with bulk and control and market surveillance that ensures that these manufacturers ab adhere to the manufacturing process, which they're not. And the test results over 600 test results now from Petrolab sitting in the application section of the Donegal County Council proves that these manufacturers did not adhere to the standards that they're supposed to adhere to when they were manufacturing concrete blocks and concrete foundations. But the problem is the government has known for a long time that these houses will last probably for another 25 to 30 years before they become inhabitable. And what they've given us is a partial fix to replace the outer skin of the blocks, hoping that the inner skin will last longer, which is not the case because a lot of the test results that I have examined through, through people who've sent them to me, asking me opinion on them, they're actually shown weaker in the inner leaf because of the load bearing part of the house is the inner leaf of the house. So it's a cheap, nasty scheme created to get the government out of a hole for a period of time, as an alcoholic would say, one day at a time. And that's the way the politicians, in my opinion, are looking at this. Some, some other government will have this headache down the road, five years down the road. The next government will say the same, pass it on. And I believe the word progression is only just starting in this scandal because it hasn't, this scandal hasn't manifested yet on how bad it's actually going to be because a lot of these properties are, are going to get worse as time goes on if they're not completely demolished with an option one and a scheme that's going to cover 100% redress and a scheme that's going to give you the most important thing, which is an, the correct engineering solution based on your scientific test results, testing for everything. There's a huge amount to unpack there in what you have just said, Frank. Um, if I can go to you now, Seamus, perhaps you might give us a final view on this topic. Well, Anna, I have listened to Frank at length tonight. I've listened to his last piece. And if Frank was saying something wrong, I would be the first to stand up. 
but Frank is bang on the button. He actually mentioned that the government and successive governments, and that includes civil servants and the various regulators, uh, didn't enforce. I would go further, much further, and I can prove it. Uh, the government and all its machinations have protected and aided and abetted the, the criminality that is in within the construction material sector. And, you know, if I'm signing off on this, I say, why again? Why taxpayers? Why not go to the people that caused the problem in the first place? OK, let taxpayers pick up whatever's left over. But Frank is right. This is typical civil service government behaviour, and it's an absolute and total waste of time because it's not even tackling the problem. So, and it is a huge, huge problem that is running and will run into many billions of euros. So we've got to sort out and see who's going to pay these billions. And for me, it shouldn't be the taxpayer. It should be the industry. Thank you very much to you, Seamus, in Sligo. And to you, Frank, in Donegal, thank you very much. Thank you, Anna, for inviting me on. Um, I think what Seamus has said is on the button. Um, the reality is that the taxpayers are going to have to pay for this, whether they like it or not. And that's the, that's their harsh reality. Um, but this is an all-Ireland problem now. And it'll be interesting to see how the Northern Ireland authorities actually deal with this, because not all their properties are affected, and not the same amount. But there's going to be a huge question mark when they conduct a proper investigation, how products, concrete products from the south, and in particular Donegal, was allowed to come across the border with certified certificates showing that the product was up to the standards that are allowed to be sold in the UK and the rest of the EU. Because scientifically now, those products do not meet the standards that they were supposed to be manufactured under. And that is the harsh reality here. The government still haven't conducted a proper criminal investigation into why this has actually happened, why these manufacturers and quarries have gotten away to date with what, with, with what they've produced and sold onto the open market sold it onto the EU open market, the British open market, which has resulted in an absolute greatest disaster in the housing, has, in the housing industry history of the state, because the ramifications of this are going to last for decades. It's going to affect generations to come because the problem in a, in a reactive iron sulfate mineral con concrete product can manifest over 50 years before it actually becomes completely disintegrated over, over those 50 years. And the examples are there in peer review studies written in Canada, the US, Norway, Switzerland, and other parts of the world long before the, the most recent one two weeks ago published by Professor Paul Dunlop, along with Dr. Andrews Lehman from EMPA, which is very important. This new study is very important on the four properties that they took samples from in Donegal further backs up what I've been saying for the last year and a half concerning that MICA hasn't been the problem. And the fact that these academics, scientists, and geologists that have come up with this new peer review study are actually identifying the fact that reactive iron sulfate minerals is the problem. And the word we all should be using is defective concrete. That is what this problem is. It's a defective concrete problem. It's, it's, it's nothing else. It's caused by reactive iron sulfate minerals and even other deleterious materials that are actually showing up and chemicals that are not even supposed to be in these, these concrete mixes. So it's a multitude of issues that the Irish government have restricted Donegal to make it only and pirate only in County Mayo and now Clare and Limerick. Thank you very much for that, uh, Frank. And once again, thanks also to Seamus. To you who have been watching, I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. M Compass Media is a news and media platform. All of the work is done by volunteers. We never ask for subscriptions, but we do ask you to share out this video 
to get word out to a much wider audience because it is only when uh, people at a grassroots level mobilize and press for change that we'll actually see the hopefully the beginning of redress for the unfortunate people who are affected by this defective concrete. Until we meet again on M Compass Media, Bamut Day Arif Galeer. <laughs>